Do the approval of the minutes from our May meeting. I move we approve the minutes of the May 2019 <laughs> meeting. Second. I wasn't here, so right. I'll say yes. yes. So, uh, Debbie, before we vote, three of the six of us here were not here. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Uh, any noes? Any abstentions? Well, I'll abstain since we weren't here. I shall abstain too. Actually, I read Robert's rules of order, and you can't approve minutes even if you weren't there. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, to me, that does not make any sense at all. How can you, you tell if they're accurate if you weren't at the meeting? <laughs> that would I guess you take the word of the rest of the yeah. group. Yeah. 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 Well, I won't bother changing for, my for vote. For the public, <laughs> we weren't skipping out. We were on the uh, doing the transit yeah. budget hearings. Yes, I know. <laughs> so. Are your mics on? According to the expert, they are. Mine is now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, the third item is the appearance of interested citizens. This is a time for citizens to come up and talk about issues that are not on the agenda. Uh, we had a sign-up sheet, and we have a few names on here, so I will just go down in the order. Uh, Dana Bauer? Yes, Walker. Walker, okay. Thank you. Should I sit here? Yes. Yes, and please uh, make sure the mic's on. And... It is. Okay, and say your name and your... City of Residence. I'm Dana Bacher, been here 42 years um, in Kaiser. And my concern is uh, a dangerous uh, pedestrian crossing on Fifth Avenue North and Honeysuckle Street. I'm on the corner of Fifth and Honeysuckle, been there 42 years. Um, we've got children and uh, pets and uh, adults and uh, bicyclists and everybody going into this park. And it looks like the park has invited them in because they've upgraded the the walkway into the park and they've upgraded the drinking fountain and they've upgraded the um, children children's play equipment so um, over the last couple of years I've noticed that the traffic has increased and along with having increased it's now going faster than the 25 per miles per hour that's posted we have a situation especially during the summer where the children going to the, to the pool or the park have to dodge traffic and they have to dodge big traffic like we have trucks and um, SUVs now and we have big ones and small ones and so there's a, a whole myriad of vehicles now that are parking on Fifth Avenue on both sides and we have no crosswalk we have no indication that they're going someplace so I guess if you're new in the neighborhood or if you're taking a detour off of River Road and coming back into our neighborhood, you have no indication that there's a pool there in a park. So that 43 miles per hour. That's what's being clocked because I asked the <laughs> officer uh, Wampler a year ago how I would get um, some speed um, readouts on the street. And a couple of, uh, maybe 10 days ago or so, he responded, and they actually, a day and a half later, put in readouts going and coming on Fifth Avenue, for which we're very grateful. But we don't know how they work. We don't know if you're recording, if you're counting, if uh, how does this work other than to alert the driver. Now we've had some drivers who are blatantly disregarding that sign and flipping the sign off, which makes no sense. <laughs> and. Um, actually challenging it by doing the 43 to see the red and the blue, the red and the blue, come on. So, Willamette Manor Park has no entry into it. Our pool has no entry into it from our side streets. It's just all take your chances. Um, I think that probably covers what I'm talking about. I think it's a recipe for disaster. I think we're looking at somebody getting really hurt. Um, some kids out of high school now have new cars. They're coming down through there. They've got trucks, they've got vans, they've got any, any motorcycles. So I'm making a plea to give this some attention. Um, and um, we hope soon because the season has just now started. Take your question. They're going both ways? Yep. 
In fact, one the other day, it was a truck with, or was a car with uh, four guys in it, and they sped at 43 this way. I came in to get a pencil and paper to get a uh, uh, license, and while I was doing that, they sped the other way, 43. Um, a truck with kid, two kids in the front seat, one in the back um, of the pickup truck, 43 that way, 43 this way. Um, we've got adults that are coming home from work. I know they want to get dinner on the table. <laughs> That makes no excuse for 34 miles per hour and at 25. And, you know, my son's an officer in Seaside. I said, can you get a ticket for just one mile over the speed limit? And he said, yes. So this is, this is just blatant disregard for our laws. And I'd like to see it stop. Thank you for taking my testimony. Uh, Hirsch has a question. I, I just wanted to kind of I wish the <clears throat> police officer was here tonight, uh, but the Readers actually record detailed information. Thank you. So you know date, time, yeah. speed, and Good. then that, they use that data to give a range for that period of time, Perfect. whatever the period of time is. It's more than just showing how fast you are. I, I have to admit, on a bike, I was excited to see how fast I could get it to go, <laughs> but I was on a bicycle. But it does provide some information, um, Good. hard data. The other question I have is, are there, I think the term that we've heard is invisible crosswalks. Is, is there actually crossings there? There's not two streets coming together. Together, two streets coming together. There's one. Well, this is a T-shaped intersection with honeysuckle oh, hun at the bottom of the T and Fifth Avenue. So honeysuckle is the one, <laughs> the end of Fifth it, yeah, you can look at that one. Yeah, you can look at it that one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now I'm, well, I'm trying to picture I'm, in my I'm, mind that there are several cross streets. I, I've lived in Kaiser for 57 years, but I can't remember. I can't picture the, the place. I have to look at it. Yeah, well, Hard if you poles. come in Sunset. Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm come in Sunset to Fifth. Yeah. Creek Street. yeah. And then Fall you go Creek to both Sunset. Sunset. This Fifth Street. Okay, so you come into Fifth. At a T intersection. Okay. I know on the north is a T, and then the no, south. Uh, so if you come in Sunset, like right, yeah, yeah, Fifth, yeah, you go, you can go north, and, or Hornet, is it Hornet? Or Hornet? Hornet. Hornet, I think, comes in off of anyway alongside Sonic. Isn't there one crossing street that it, it dead ends on the east side of Fifth Street? Yes, mm -hmm. it's like Hornet. Yeah. In, okay. So, and that's the only one that actually crosses between Sunset and. Hornet, right? Uh, Dennis more. also crosses. Dennis, Dennis and oh, Hornet. Okay, Dennis crosses. Yeah. Too. yeah, sunset. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have more people to talk about yeah. this issue, so let's get those yeah. folks to all talk. Okay. And... Excuse me. Assuming I'm second on your list. <laughs> And I'm going to probably read most of my notes because otherwise I'll leave stuff out. Um, but I'm on the same topic. Dana is actually my wife. And I'm um, sorry, did you uh, say your name? I'm Wes Jackson. Okay, thank you. And I'm coming before you today to bring to your attention the dangerous intersection of Fifth Avenue North. Some of you may recognize that Fifth Avenue North is part of an unofficial arterial that exists parallel to and west of River Road. For those of you trying to place it, I'll merely point out it's part of the route taken by the floats uh, following the Kaiserfest uh, parade every May. It's also taken daily by many drivers attempting to avoid congestion on River Road. Of Fifth Avenue North, I call your attention to the 3800 block, which is between Dennis Lane North and Hornet Drive North. Central in this block is located both the Hollywood Swim Club and the main entrance to Willamette Manor Park neither of which have any dedicated parking. This results in three problematic figures converging. Uh, increased through traffic, heavy curb parking, and pedestrians of all ages. Uh, many of the drivers along Fifth Avenue North are merely transiting the neighborhood and do not reside in it. As such, they are often driving faster than the posted speed limit of 25. Through neighbor requests, Kaiser PD has placed mobile speed limit sensing trailers in an attempt to get drivers to honor the posted speed limit, and we thank them for that. Uh, however, a percentage of drivers ignore the sign 
when it reports they are exceeding the speed limit, and a smaller percentage of drivers actually speed up to see the, the sign flash its red, blue, and yellow lights. If these speed sensing trailers have recording ability, which obviously now we know they do, then I suggest Kaiser PD may, able, may be able to provide you with this, the, statist the statistics showing the percentage of speeders and their speeds. Um, we regularly see them speeding well above 40 uh, um, every day. This is not something that has occurred a few times, but we can go out there for a couple of hours and we'll see somebody that is over 40. In this area, there are no parking lots, so all parking is curb parking. It also means on those days when demand for the pool and the park are up, parking along this block of Fifth Avenue North and along Honeysuckle Street North is at a premium. The problem is that this demand for parking goes hand in hand with pedestrians. While I haven't conducted a survey of the number of people per car, I would say it's closer to three per car as parents bring their children to the pool or park. Since this block has no formal, um, by that I mean painted crosswalks, or parking control curb painting, cars park where they can, including illegally close to the corners of Honeysuckle Street North, and pedestrians emerge from cars on the street side and from between cars parked in the middle of the block. Speeding traffic and pedestrian traffic with no pedestrian or parking controls is a setup for a vehicle pedestrian accident. As a neighbor that sees the traffic, both vehicular and pedestrian daily, it's clear to me that formal painted crosswalks are required leading to the park and to the pool. Further, safety in what I sh feel should be a pedestrian zone should be enhanced with speed bumps approaching from both directions to force traffic to slow down. And finally, one more factor for your consideration. This is a neighborhood where many of the curbs and sidewalks were constructed over 50 years ago and to codes of a different era. At the intersection of Honeysuckle Street North and Fifth Avenue North, there are ADA wheelchair ramps on the west side of the street, but there are no corresponding curb ramps on the east side of Fifth Avenue North. Conversely, on the east side of Fifth Avenue North, where there are ramps of a sort, which are actually driveways, there are no corresponding ramps on the west side of Fifth Avenue North. So while a nice path has just been paved through Willamette Manor Park, someone in a wheelchair cannot cross Fifth Avenue North from ramp to ramp to get to it without having to wheel down Fifth Avenue North to the nearest ramp on the other side. And with curb parking, that means wheeling down the middle of Fifth Avenue North because of cars parked along the curb. Not the sort of accommodation to the disabled that I would expect. In conclusion, I suggest you come see the 3800 block of Fifth Avenue North on a Saturday, and I'm sure you'll agree that formal crosswalks, wheelchair ramps, parking controls such as curb painting, and speed control devices such as speed bumps are more than justified for the public safety and enjoyment by Kaiser residents of the recreational features found in our neighborhood. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Are you, what's the neighborhood association? This is West. 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 Oh, this right is, here. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, well, I, I thought that is. is right here. All right, we'll hear from you. So, uh, Kathy, you have a question? Oh, no, I was raising my hand as the West Kaiser name. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, understanding all the issues, like you've just said, uh, including that the ADA accommodation shortfall, for sure, um, in general, I would say that curb parking or on-street parking would be beneficial in general. Oh, I have no objection to curb parking yeah. as such. But I, in the current conditions, yeah. Yeah, my issue is that often as parking becomes a premium, people are parking so that their vehicles are extending in front of curb cutouts, right. ADA cutouts, yeah, and, that, uh, and such. So um, I'm just saying that painted curbs might go a long way to controlling some of the parking issues. Okay. All right. And Mr. Uh, Chair. Oh. Yes. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> well done. Thank you. Uh, I, I like the detail that you just provided. It gives us some real good ammunition. You mentioned speed bumps, and of course, as a cyclist, I hate those. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, you then went on to mention um, traffic control devices, and there are thousands in, uh, in the market uh, for those. And have, have you been down Winter Street? 
I don't recall it. Well, they have planters in the middle. Oh, yeah. huh. yeah. That is a traffic control device, and oh, roundabout. it slows traffic down, yet cyclists and everything can go, mm -hmm. go through. Uh, I don't know if the city would be even consider that, but I'm not sure how it could be implemented there, but um, I can certainly drive down Winter Street. Yeah. And well, <coughs> if, if you do. go it into the, the cross streets. Right. Yeah. Like Dennis and yeah, I've seen it. I've seen arterials before with islands in the center where you had to drive around an island such that um, you didn't have to stop or even slow down too much, but you did have to watch your speed in order to navigate. Yeah. And it certainly makes yeah. sense. I'm just not sure how it would fit in Fifth Avenue without any, because um, the Holiday Swim Club is really quite close to, um, to Fifth Avenue. There's, uh, they have a fence, then there's a sidewalk, planning strip, and curb. Um, and uh, same thing on the opposite side of the street. Uh, so I'm not sure how it could be implemented there, but certainly that would now they're putting speed control devices on Maple Street. In fact, is I think they're in now. Yeah, they're in. So yeah, stuff to, for, that we can use as reference points. Yeah, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, the key is to control <coughs> the speed. Anyone else? Uh, Dan, Councillor Kohler. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a copy of the letter that. Uh, Sergeant Lede sent. Is that something that you've reviewed? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, it was sent uh, Wednesday, June 12th at 1.50 p.m. to Dana41710 at msn.com. Is that your mm -hmm. email address? Yes. Okay. And in there he addressed several of the, the things we were talking about. And one of the things that I thought was good that it, he, he talked about all the different things that as the city he has a responsibility to do and he said that he would commit to do what he could to have more patrols in that area so I don't know if that's something that that you had seen or not could you come up if you're gonna could you come up if you're gonna respond I hate to be a nag. I don't know how that's going to affect them if I'm calling them all the time. Um, that was a suggestion by uh, uh, Mayor Clark was to get a description and call. And I'd be on the phone all day. I'd be on the phone all day. I I understand and I and I fully support the police department. My son is a police officer. Um, I know Dan Carroll. I know uh, Mr. Teague. I you know I just don't think it's that simple. Call a cop. I, I think one of the things that he says in here, though, is that he says currently we have, he talks about 4,000 folks in town. We have approximately eight, 800 roads and, and, and serve, service well over 400 crashes a year. And he talks in the past 17 years, he's had no reported incidents in that area of a crash. But then he, he does talk also about the, the, the radar trailers are there. Usually we only keep them there for a week, but he's, he's, he's authorizing to be there for two weeks mm -hmm. so they can get a better idea of what's going on. And then he's committed to put more resources there to priori prioritize the resources and, and do what he can to help. Uh, so at least... I, I feel like at least we're getting that point before we can go on anything but, else. That but, the but talking about resources, doesn't it take more resources to employ a police officer to come out there to watch what's going on or to even get a ticket out, put in a darn crosswalk? It's paint. Well, and I, I would just like to reinforce what you're saying. It's taking police away from the duties we hope exactly. they're doing. Exactly. And it really shows a failure of design, not... Oh, yes. Yes. Else, and, you know, so. it hasn't been a problem. Like I say, I've been there a long time. Until recently, last two, three years, in fact, a fellow moved in right next door to the pool, and he came over and he said, this traffic is terrible. I never would have bought here if I knew. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, he's got a little kid. I'm busy. I'm, you know, 
I'm off doing something else. But uh, that brought to mind, and I thought, my God, now I'm going to watch it. But we used to have kids on big wheels, remember those big plastic <laughs> things? They used to just fly off that sidewalk and get right to the pool. We can't do that anymore. Don't do that. So we've got, I mean, I think a simple crosswalk with paint would help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I think there's um, a number of things that the city could do. The crosswalk, painting the crosswalk would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, maybe some signs that say park ahead or children watch slow children or, you know, <laughs> slow. <laughs> yeah. I love that sign, slow children. <laughs> um, and then uh, as far as the ADA ramps, I'm wondering if those are still on the um, plan to do on the east side of because you know the city's kind of in the midst of redoing right and they've, ramps, and they've that would done be some in that out. neighborhood but so far we've need, seen no sign that they're doing any uh, immediately in this area we've we've put up you know those little green men that yeah, know, yeah. Indicate, they get stolen yeah oh and the signs that drive like your kids lived here Right. I don't know that right. those do a whole lot of good, but yes, but, I, I like that idea. Yeah, I do like. Yeah, that. I mean, just signage, and we're watching you. We know you're doing this. Yeah, and and certainly the crosswalk striping, I think, makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Well, we have a great deal of. Uh, we we are very supportive of the police department, and that we love what they do. We just don't think that pulling a police officer away when we see somebody speeding is the best long-term solution. The By the problem. time I make the phone call, the guy is gone. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's I give you a question. Thank you on the uh, police reader boards, do they take a picture of the car speeding? Does anyone know that? Yeah. No. no. They do not. Okay. Yes, Deb. Yeah. I have something for you. Uh, this is the Neighborhood Traffic Management Program. Um, our uh, Public Works Director, Bill Lawyer, saw the emails that were going around and came to me with that because uh, our Public I, Works guy I wasn't going to be here. It. It's just, it, so there's, it but won't it, happen for three years if we go through this process. That We've is, got children on the street here. today. Well, if you let me finish, please. Uh, um, it is a process, and um, it's it's meant to be um, to take time, so that because a lot of times neighbors don't want the speed bumps. But when he brought that to my attention, I suggested, and this is not in there. It's a combination of a crosswalk and a speed bump. It's not really a speed bump. It's a hump. So if you're going 25 miles an hour, you don't have to slow down. Right. But it also lets you know that there's a crosswalk there. Now, the other thing is that I know that the public works director will say when you say put a painted crosswalk there, he's very uh, cautious about doing that because he says painted crosswalks give people a false sense of security. They don't really slow traffic or stop anybody. So people just walk across right. thinking the cars are going to stop and there's almost more potential for injury yes. with mm -hmm. a painted crosswalk than there is without. That's all I know. I mean, don't argue with me. I'm just saying <laughs> what I'm <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so maybe the raised ones, though, I think are better. Yeah, let's let uh, Carol. You you're next on the list. Hi, my name is Carol Dorfler, and I'm here as president of the West Kaiser Neighborhood Association, and a citizen to complain about speeding in our neighborhood. Uh, I was made aware of the problem down by the pool. Um, by the string of emails that had um, been generated, uh, Dana sending one off to Sergeant Wampler. Uh, and I just want to support them in their issue of trying to get some help uh, in that area. And if you have ever been there uh, on a really hot day when school is out and there's parking on both sides and kids are jumping, out of the cars on either side, um, it, it is potentially a disaster waiting to happen. And I don't care if there hasn't been a crash there in 17 years. This is not a good situation for these kids to be in. It's the same issue that was over on Delight with parking uh, and cars backing out. No kid was ever killed there or hurt there but it was a problem that needed to be taken care of and thank heavens we're finally going to get that taken care of. This is a problem 
for that area. I understand uh, the police do what they can. I absolutely support what Dana says. By the time you call the police, they're gone. They're going so fast, they're gone. So why are you pulling that officer away from something else? I think it's something that you all need to take to wherever it is that you take and say, we heard this issue. This is a problem. We need to address this. Um, there are things, there's speed tables. And I don't know if you've all been exposed to speed tables. They uh, were, they are in my oldest daughter's neighborhood in California. And it's just, a, a it's not a bump. It's just this flat thing and it's like a sidewalk and it's striped and it will, it will slow traffic down. Um, but there are many, many things that can be done. Now, the first thing I thought of was a striped crosswalk, Wes, because the kids are told at school, you go to the crosswalk, you go to the white, I'm a crossing guard, and I know they're taught this, you go to the white striped crossing, and that's where you are supposed to cross to go to school. So they, there's kind of that mindset in there already, but I didn't realize that there, there was that issue with, or like Debbie said, Bill said that it, it maybe potentially makes them feel safe and they're really not. But I, I really would like to support these people. It needs to be taken care of in our neighborhood. I live on the corner of Shoreline and Rafael. You all know that it's a, I don't know if you all know that, it's a very large intersection. It's a huge intersection, and I want one of those planters <laughs> put in the middle of that street. I was in my window the other day. I was walking through the living room. I have a gigantic window. There's a stop sign right there on the corner. Not one, two cars down Rafael, never stopped and around the corner, and the second one, the same thing. Uh, so this behavior, I don't know where this behavior came from, but we need to address the issues. I don't think we can address the behavior. Well, and as I was saying, the street design, it's reinforcing people's driving faster than they should be because it gives signals that you can drive faster. Yeah. So thank you. I, like I said, I'm here on the behalf of the West Kaiser Neighborhood Association and we will be back. <laughs> Kathy? She will be back. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Carol. Mm -hmm. thank um, you. Carolyn, did you? Um, Carolyn Holman and I live on Sunset and I'm also with West Kaiser Neighborhood Association and I just want to echo what the others have said. I've been concerned about traffic on 5th Street. I live just around the corner on Sunset. Um, kids are walking to school on Sunset all the time and we also see lots and lots of kids walking to the pool on Sunset around the corner down 5th to get to the pool. So. Um, I know there's a lot of foot traffic, and um, there are way too many people speeding. My husband is working in the yard almost daily. Um, numerous occasions of cars flying down Sunset from Rivercrest to get to River Road. Um, and there was an accident uh, several years ago. Somebody came around the corner on Rivercrest and didn't make it and landed up in one of our neighbor's yards. So it has happened. And um, somebody also took our mailbox out at one point. So um, the uh, resurfaced river, or sunset as you know, and um, put travel lanes on the sides, which is an improvement. It was supposed to slow down traffic, but I, I really don't think that worked. It just seems like it's a runway now from Rivercrest to, to River Road. So. Um, anything that can be done, especially on 5th, to assist children getting safely to the pool would be something Kaiser could be proud of, so. What, <coughs> what school are they going to? What's Cumming, the attendance? Cummings. Is that Cummings? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. That's a long walk. They actually do walk 
that far. I, yes. yes. Well, I, yeah, given <laughs> yes. today's, given today's <laughs> things, I wonder. Mm. There's also a um, preschool right at the T of Fifth and Sunset. So you have tiny children sometimes out with their teachers walking on Sunset. So I'm just down to the park. Just curious, I'm curious. If I'm on Sunset, how do I get to Cummings? Isn't it? You go there? to Rivercrest. Down to Rivercrest. All the way down to Rivercrest or up to River Road, right? No, you don't go River Road. You go Rivercrest north yeah. to. What is that, Man Manburn? Manburn. And then hook over to well, Up Delight. Until you get to Menlo, and then you have to take a jog with. Yeah, so you there's, jog there's to. There's no direct way to get to school. You gotta. Really it's no, it's, you but you can walk there. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, but it's not direct. But there's sidewalks most there's of the way. Through, yeah. Well, there's nothing um, through like from Sunset to Larry. Mm -mm. No way to get through. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. They do. I know, but I'm just <laughs> nodding. <laughs> Trust me, they do. You Any know, this, okay, I've said this before, maybe not here, but in other venues, that um, the it would be nice that the public works could in, install in their plan, just from the get-go, whenever they're repaving or doing something that is tearing up the road surface and they're at intersections, to put in... Uh, some traffic calming devices. Uh, that's not a standard thing. They just either recreate what's there or bring it up to current ADA standards, but, but putting in traffic calming is not on the checklist as far as I know. Yeah, I don't know. Thank right. you. What, what's your, uh, wait, wait, go first. I just wanted to summarize what, uh, what you guys are desiring. So this is what I wrote down some crosswalks to the pool in Willamette Manor Park, wheelchair ramps that are ADA compliant, some speed bumps or combination crosswalk with a speed hump, some painted curbs, and then um, enforcement, we've got the reader boards and more patrols. And then Carol wants a planner at uh, <laughs> Shoreline and Raphael. <laughs> Traffic calming device. Yeah. Yes, what exactly. We would. Yeah. Okay. Signage, signage in the proper places where you're coming yeah. around the corner off of Sunset onto Fifth. Children at play or children in the pool. Or yes. Children, beware of children. Got to be about 40 feet. Filling them up because they're going to the pool. <laughs> right. And the park. Uh, does Willamette Manor have a parking lot or is it all street parking? Mm -mm. Okay, thank you, Karen. So, yeah. Can I have a question, point of order? Can we, should we dis make some comments or decisions or discussion of this issue now, this moment, or should we continue, we could be breaking away from the agenda, or continue with the agenda, and then when at some point later tonight, bring this back up and say something about it. I'm not sure which one we're supposed to do. I mean, I've, because they could get up and leave if we did it now. Uh, they don't yeah. have to well, listen to the rest of it. So what do you guys think? M my feeling is we know what the police are able to do based on um, Officer uh, Sergeant Lede's feedback. But should we do this now? Uh, but we don't know what public works right. can do. Right. My feeling is, right now is I think we could <clears throat> propose, I would like the idea of calming devices in conjunction with um, a s sidewalk because uh, I, I, I agree with um, Bill's comment that just putting the paper doesn't down, unless we do the new technology with the 3D mm -hmm. crosswalk where it's a visual thing that, what the heck's that till the people get there, but that's technology that's not in our budget. But the speed uh, uh, hump. hump, the humps uh, are, in the, if they do it, put them in right, doesn't affect cycling, but they're big enough. Now, the other issue on top of this is the street has become a shortcut. 
Is that, am I correct? And, a, and, I, and that's another set of behavior that we don't have control over. Which, uh, as, as a shortcut, it might actually be, you know, for the River Road discussion, we are looking for shortcuts to get around River Road. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, doing this could cause people to find another shortcut. Yeah, well, we certainly don't want to be just pushing people okay. from one street to another. Can I try it a different way? Okay. The, the, you guys have brought some problems up, but basically speeding cars, period, pedestrians and speeding cars, pedestrians and heavy traffic, uh, we have some focal points which seem to be at the <coughs> pool and the park where we have a lot of congestion, pedestrians, and I'm going to assume bikes and cars. We have no parking in the area. Um, so we have increased traffic. We have some ADA ramp problems. We have unmarked, unmarked curbs. These are the problems. And what we're trying to avoid is somebody getting hurt or some damage occurring. Okay. We've discussed, all of us, or everybody's brought up different things. You want signage, crosswalks painted into the street, curbs, bulb outs at the corners. You mentioned that. Uh, what do you call the trees in the middle? I've always called them traffic circles. But yeah, just little tires in the middle of the intersection or in the calming. middle of the street, if could, maybe. Um, police attendants, speed bumps. I, I, I throw this in because it's probably impossible. Traffic signal, crosswalk signal, stop sign at the corner. What? And seriously, I looked at that and going, I can stop this in a hurry up. We'll do like we did on Park Meadow. You put a stop sign right there at the pool three-way stop, that would slow things down. But I'm not suggesting that, I'm just saying it would happen. So these are some things that we need to decide, we need to decide, I think, we should think this over and discuss it again and make a recommendation to the city council of that these are some things we would recommend the city council take because we don't have any money. This, in this group, none of that, we don't have any power either. So. I don't even know why you're here, but the city, we, can, we can recommend to the city council that action be taken, and these are the these are the priority recommendations of improvements we'd like to see happen. We can do that, but I don't think we can do it tonight because I need to think a lot more about it, and I need to talk to him because we don't agree on a bunch of things. So, <laughs> what I'd like to say, okay, so that's what I see us doing is either make some sort of decision now about what we're going to do with this. And I would suggest we look these things over and come back at the next meeting prepared to make a recommendation specifically to the city council of which of these want. And I would not, sorry, Dan, I would not consider money an issue. I don't think that's, I mean, the city council, excuse me, the city council has to take money into account. We don't. Right. I'm not going to try and second guess what you're willing to spend. So if you don't want to spend anything, fine. If you're willing to spend a million dollars on it, which isn't very much nowadays. That's, <laughs> you know. And you could also be planning for next year's budget. There's nothing we're going to... I really don't think you're going to find a huge amount of money in, in the coming year's budget. So that would be my recommendation. So I, I agree with think? not doing a motion tonight. Um, I would think <clears throat> we could have something written up better by the next meeting, perhaps we can do a tour, maybe uh, try and hit it when the most traffic or kids are around. Between 4.30 and 5.30. Well, we could add to the traffic. Yeah, yeah we can. <laughs> we can, we can we'll can, ride the bike. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll speed through on our bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we can do that, and I think we would have a better motion, and we'd have public works here too, and where we could actually, and the police, hopefully, yeah, and we could actually uh, interact with them in the discussion, and um, I think I think it would be better to postpone a, any motion and vote until then. Okay, could, is there a way uh, that we could, uh, some of you have ideas about things, I don't, for example, when you talk about bulb ups, I'm not really sure what you mean, and if you're talking about uh, it's a planner in the middle, I need some more information about that sort of stuff, can you? Can we send it to each other if you know anything? If you don't, you know, we can all come in totally ignorant and vote. Yeah. We're allowed to. It's not well, like the planning commission. Each other? If you have to be careful not to make any decisions, 
Right. Right. And uh, and uh, not all of you get on at the same time. Right. You know, it's, oh. the, what, if you, if the two of you talk and then, then you talk to somebody else and that's yeah, I just want to email him. I think sharing information that is going to be brought up at a meeting is not a problem. Okay. okay. It's just voicing opinions should probably not be done. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, just share the information. That's part of the public record, public meetings law. Right. That's all. I'm, yeah. not being, I'm not being a pain. No, no, no. I, I, I would rather we stay on the right side. We have nine or uh, I list. I thought I listed nine or ten ideas. If you have any more, we can like add can. to. I can, I can send you the summary too if you want. So you have something to start no. with. Yes, please. Hirsch. I think uh, uh, there's a project that's just going on right now. The uh, Salem Bike Boulevard. Yeah. In, on Maple Street and how they're putting in um, the humps. Yep. And accentuating. Um, crosswalks th and, and things like now. Now, maple is not the same animal, but there's some ideas here, and it's nice to see them in pictures. But in real life, it's it's better. So I, I'd suggest you know if you have a chance, go down Maple Street. Um, okay. I, I agree that I, I, it's too bad that Public Works and that. Police aren't here tonight because this would have been really helpful to have them hear this discussion. Yeah, graduation for one and vacation for the Well, they are allowed to <laughs> have a life too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sure. Yeah, is there a way we can make sure that we have both public works and the police department <coughs> represented at the next meeting? Somebody from. from yeah. Tell yeah. Do they have stand-ins? I mean. <laughs> I think with the police, they um, have pretty, pretty good, pretty lot of division kind of things that certain people do certain things and they don't step over the line. Right. So I kind of think that uh, uh, we, and, and with public works, you know, Bill Lawyer could maybe come, but as far as uh, anybody else in streets other than Mikey, I, I'm not sure that there would be. But okay. next month, maybe they'll be here. Yeah. Well, maybe they could. If they could give us a heads up that they won't be here, like I'm sure, like on this graduation and vacation, they they planned that a while back. And right. He, I mean, he did send an email to everybody. Oh, I didn't see that. You didn't get it. I didn't see that. Yeah, he yeah. said he wasn't okay. wouldn't be here. And Mikey sent his that when when he was going to go on vacation, was, which was a couple weeks ago. That might have gone to my junk. I'll check. <laughs> uh, so just quickly, Carol, if you want to. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I got so excited about the planter in front of in shoreline. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot this part. There is a program, and I think Kathy probably knows about this: the Safe Routes to Parks program, mm -hmm. yeah. which is very similar. You all probably are familiar with that. Then, yeah. okay. So that might be also a piece in the future, <clears throat> and I understand that that is a real process. It's just like the Safe Routes to School thing; it takes yeah. a while to do that, and we're really looking for something to happen a little quicker than that because it, it's just really dangerous situation there. But that may be also something that you could put on the back burner uh, in thoughts of other parks that might have these issues also. Okay. And we just haven't heard about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm officially closing the uh, public non-agenda, public testimony, <laughs> non-agenda part of the thing. Okay, thank you, everyone. And, and feel free to come back next month if you want to. You'll be back. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you're, welcome, you're welcome to stay for the rest. You're all welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting yeah, if you, you are want welcome. to. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Fuller? Thank you, Chair de Blasi. Just, uh, Dana? Dana? J may I just say thank you for taking the time to come do all this. Uh, when, when they asked me to run for city council the first time, I said that the the thing that will probably be most difficult for me is the speed of government. And, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm used to just making a decision and doing it and, and watching things go this slowly just kill me. So I, I, I thank you for coming and thank you with your patience with us. I think without the input of Public Works, we really can't do anything, but we'll work on that. And the second is I feel good that at least we have uh, 
Sergeant Ledoux that is looking at things and is, is going to do what he can at this point. So we, we are moving forward, but at a snail's pace. But thank you very much for coming. I worked in our Oregon State Legislature for a Oh, my God. <laughs> so I, I know about making sausage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, so moving on, uh, we have project reports. Um, Pat is not here tonight. She may or may not be chilled riding in France right now. <laughs> uh, so we will move on to Wayne, and Wayne is handing out some stuff for us. Yeah, I was uh, assigned a few things last month. Um, a bike parking <clears throat> assessment tool. I have started that. I've got it. I've been using it to evaluate the uh, bike racks at all 10 schools. Um, that's what I want to talk about right now is the, uh, I have done a bike rack inventory for all 10 schools. I've been out to all 10 schools uh, twice. The first time was just to de determine the capacity and the type of bike racks that the school has. And then I went out again during school uh, Wednesday during class time to determine usage, uh, point of time usage. So that's what this spreadsheet is in front of you. Um, try to identify the school, the type of bike rack that we find at that school. Is it secured with a fence or is it not secured? Uh, the total capacity. And then I went out again. The first trip was on uh, May 4th. That was a Saturday. The second trip was May 28th. Uh, a Wednesday to determine usage and so what I learned is that it's not just bicycles the kids are also going to school on scooters and skateboards um, and then I determined total usage and I determined I looked up each school to find out what their enrollment is for this last year um, Total capacity, we had 610 bike racks for all the schools. Um, if we take the, the one day usage, we had 88 people using their own power to get to school, bikes, scooters, or skateboards. That's about 14.4%. If we look at how many students are out there, there's uh, 6,920 total students within those 10 schools. And the usage of uh, their own power is like 1.2%. <laughs> so the uh, usage is really down. The uh, capacity is there. It's not currently being used or to its full extent. Um, and then I also learned that some of the schools are better, have better bike racks and better security than other schools. So this is a baseline data. We'll need to do more user or usage data when school's back in session. Kathy? This is really interesting, Wayne. What a, what a project. But what's one thing that really strikes me is Kennedy Elementary has no bicycle capacity, but they have 54 kids with their bikes. Well, wait a minute. That's that right? yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> Thank you for oh. finding that one. That should be a zero there. Oh, so so no one's riding their bike to Kennedy. No, they oh. they have no bike racks. Uh, they have a covered play area. They and I believe they might park in there, but I don't know that because I think it's way behind. Yeah, you can't see it <laughs> from anywhere. When, when I looked, I looked on both sides. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go all the way to the back. It's I'm talking the back back. Then there might be some back there. I, I didn't yeah. go that far. But because there may there, not be any either. I mean. There is racks at the um, uh, Boys and Girls Club next uh, door. Mm -hmm. And another thing is Clear Lake has all these bike racks, but they're not encouraging, apparently, kids to use them. Only yeah. seven apparently. out of 140 <laughs> spots. Well, have you? it's not... It the easiest is, to bike yeah. around there. Oh, isn't it? Uh, I'm trying to think where it's And this was just a it's one day. It's out in that big neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah. I, I bike there the, all the time with my well, kids. But well, like, would you have your like I kind of said right? in that uh, article by the Salem Reporter, um, 
one of the things that I learned about schools that, in doing the Safe Routes to School at Hallman Elementary, which is a walking school, is parent fear factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's unrelenting and uh, stranger fear, all these kind of things. And um, our presenters uh, this earlier, you know, traffic. I don't want my kid walking in the traffic, even if it's on two or three blocks. Or, so there's multiple, you know, we could, they could have beautiful, beautiful racks and meet our standards, but if parents are afraid, so, you know, it takes a lot of work, you know, uh, if, if uh, Kennedy or, or, or Clear Lake, say, created, and establish walking school buses, things like that. But that takes a lot of energy to get started. Yeah. Mm. It does. Yeah. And if you don't have parents that will buy into it, you can't expect a teacher to do it. So it, it, it's the engineering part is cheap and easy mm -hmm. in comparison. Right. Um, the perceptions and... You know, even if you gave money incentives, and we had trinkets and stuff, kind of incentives for kids to walk to school at Hallman, it may have raised it a point zero zero one. Yeah. One thing is we could do disincentives where we don't allow parents to drop their kids up right in front of the school and then queue up for an hour, for 30 minutes. Well, um, I know in the past based on the safe run, there has been principals that have done that, and the principals end up being moved. Yeah. Parents, my kid, the danger. And over at Hallman, they did have that one kid that got killed 10 years ago by the city truck going down Hawthorne. And that has resounded in that community now for another decade. So, and you know Hawthorne is really walkable. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. So we have to think about perceptions, too, besides just pure engineering. Kathy? Another question. Um, how many of these bikes were tied up or locked up? Most of them have locks? Or they just well, I didn't look that close. Oh. I did, uh, the first time I went to the schools, just on a Saturday, there were some permanent locks there attached to the bike racks. So at least some of them were, were locked. <laughs> uh, but I didn't, I didn't look at locked and unlocked. I wonder if that's maybe an issue for some kids are afraid their bike will get stolen if they don't have a lock. And then some of the schools have uh, better secured facilities. Yeah. Uh, Claggett Creek Middle School is the best mm -hmm. example on the east side of the school. They have a fenced area that can be locked. They have a security camera. Oh, and they wow. have the proper bicycle rack, wave, wave rack, many, many wave racks. So that's the best example. Um, other schools, they have a fenced area, but it may not be locked. Or they have a fenced area, and then they put the bike racks too close to the fence. Yeah. And you can't use the other half of the bike rack. Right. <laughs> um, well, it's, I think like what Hirsch was talking about, uh, was it Kennedy you were saying? you? It's somewhere in the back, so it sounds like either they were trying to be very secure or safe spot to park, or it's just so hidden, hidden <laughs> that people don't even think to use it. Well, I have, uh, when we get to other parts, I, I want to talk about Kennedy and some positives that are going on there that might uh, really have an impact on, on other things that we're talking about with Kennedy as well as what Wayne's bring up about um, some engineering. There's something going on at Kennedy that's amazing. All right. And I got to be on the first ground level with them there. And it's, you want me to talk about it now? Um, no, let's, let's, no, yeah, let's okay. just, yeah. So, um, and McNary, we're on deck that as the project for McNary and its expansion finishes a little bit, 
will go back to that area by the cafeteria and I have pictures um, in um, early April and there were 40 bikes mm -hmm. and we'll um, try to get the same capacity but with new bike racks and Eric made uh, the principal Eric Jesperson kind of and one of his teachers mentioned um, skateboard storage yeah so I'm pretty okay. sure the uh, skateboards and the scooters uh, probably school will have to be stored outside with the bicycles currently they don't have any but maybe they do I haven't called or have gone in to see if they have indoor storage for those gups sir I know you can bring them in not every classroom you can do it, but they do have room where you, the day. collapsible scooters. I read about McNary, and they do not allow rotation devices inside the school. That might be because <laughs> elementary kids are a little more yeah listen to, to their adults more than high school kids. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything? Uh, that's really all I had. I, I haven't done anything for safe routes to school uh, for. Infra for non-infrastructure, I haven't done anything there. I haven't really done anything for safe routes to parks. Um, this thing that they mentioned earlier might be related to that. Yeah. Um, so just bike racks is what I've done. <laughs> so the the emails we got about the uh, safe routes to school grant was someone going to talk about that tonight, or was that just for our own education? Um, I can. Okay. So we'll just have you do that on committee input. Or, or Hirsch could too. He was on the. I'm on the that committee. Steering committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, basically, moving ahead for funding that position with the school district. The position oh, itself yeah. is going to be with the um, cog. with the cog, but un, one of the things that I learned working in the school district you don't have one of those tags you can't get in you know you're you can only be here this person will have the tag they will be more in the school districts giving money on it because it's considered a consultant they're all for there's funding for three years and Mike Jaffe is working to get additional funding for another three years now um, this the position is not going to be a teacher position you can have a specialist or, or a, a lower position, which the school district kind of liked, and that person wouldn't do all the teaching, but, but would be able to pull in the resources, work with principals, and they would be a part of a small group of schools. You know, Portland has, I think, 15 of these positions, and they're almost at every school. Here we're just talk, start wanting to start out with one position, see how it works, and um, I think four or six elementary schools, and because of what Kennedy did last month, it, it reached Linda Meyer, and she really wants to put Kennedy and Cummings for us on that list. They are on the list. Yeah. 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 This is for a safe routes to school coordinator position. Yes. Is that what we're referring to? Right. Yes. Okay, well, it sounds like Hirsch is coming out of retirement. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to. It's <laughs> need a little younger energy <laughs> level. <Okay. laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's, uh, if Wayne, you're done. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Kathy. Do you have any? Um, I don't have anything to add to that, but if anyone knows what I was thinking, what? I need a big map of the city something that I don't have to print off on my oh. printer. Anyone know where I can get a giant? Mike, check with. Oh, yeah, oh, Public gosh. Works. Public Works? Yeah. Uh, well, we have um, like a, a road map kind of thing. Yeah. Is, that's not very big. Well, bigger than eight, by eight and something a half by 11 or something. Uh, water. I might, I might, if you want to wait until after the meeting, I might do it. I'm not sure if Allison has them at the front anymore than used to be. Oh, OK. Yeah. Or I can come back okay. another time if you want to head home. OK. Okay, that might be helpful, and then I can, you can yeah. tool around and actually write things down and stuff. And Pat was going to help me with that, too, and we've been in and out of town, so missing each other, too. Right. So we'll work on it some more. Okay. Uh, all right, um, so moving on, we have 
Joe and Kathy on the additional bike repair station. Anything to uh, not talk about that at all the last couple of meetings? So. I mm. did, um, yeah, and I wasn't here the last couple of meetings. Well, I was talking about neighborhood associations. So. Oh, mm. you did? Oh. Um, I rode through the Ben Miller Park area tonight because we had talked about maybe that's an area of the city that could use um, another bike repair station. And because um, it's right up down the street from Claggett and Claggett Creek and Weddell. And um, it would be a, a, probably a good central location, except it's not secure. not secured like out here. You know, it wouldn't have eyes on it. So that might be something to think about, too. Um, but first, we need to get one. And I did contact um, Roxanne Rolls at uh, Chariots to see if they have not maybe some more money in their budget again, because that's where we got our last one. They, they had some money in the Trip Choice program. Um, Do you know what happened to the one that was at the downtown transit center? Because it is not there. Uh, oh, he got moved. It? He mm -hmm. got moved oh. because it got vandalized. Where is it? Uh, I think it's in the locker right at the moment. Oh, I didn't, you didn't even notice that. Yeah, because they were, what started out, and we learned from them, luckily they gave us some good feedback. They placed it really close to the bike rack. Well, they were using the tools off that because it's so close to steal parts and stuff off bicycles. Oh. <clears throat> so um, they took that out away from there, and uh, it, they're thinking they were going to put it at the new transit center out south, but that's not going to happen. Right. I don't want to sound like I'm throwing a, a monkey wrench into your guys' idea, but I had such a wonderful experience at Kennedy, and the Boys and Girls Club at Kennedy would love to have one. Well, there. that's another possibility. I mean, that, you know, we just need some place that's going to get used. Well, and Boys and Girls Club's no right there. Still a security problem up there. Well, at least there's people there more often than not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with the vandalism, was it vandalism to the repair station or just using it as a method? Yeah, as a method. Okay. Oh, that's okay. interesting. Because that's important distinction. Yeah. 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 Right. The only one that's really been vandalized and parts stolen are the one is the city of Salem's one down at the riverfront. Okay. Um, so the next one, if we're done, is the NACDO discussion. Uh, we have not, but I, last time or two months ago, Joe mentioned that uh, you would talk to um, what's his name from ODOT. Uh, Gary. Yeah, Gary. That it's not a. A, a adoptable plan perhaps, right. or guidelines. It's an addendum or whatever. Right. I did, looking at the NACTO site though, they do do, uh, I don't want to call it a training thing, but where they'll what, two or three basically do education to the, to a city who chooses to the old want Wilson. to participate or, or, or incorporate these guidelines. Front so loaders. So Probably, yeah. I think as we get talking, we could look at applying for that as well. Yeah, I was wondering if there's some kind of video or something that just kind of outlines it, or you know, if you give, give yeah. the committee well, there's, a, there's a website, a oversight. so if you just Google the NACTO, N-A-C-T-O, um, that'll bring you right to their website, and it gives you all the information and background and, and what it is that the guidelines that they have written do and are, are trying to address. Okay. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to present something like that here, but certainly some condensed thing once we talk about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, David, you have a nice big blank next year. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. All right, so we'll move to Joe. Uh, well, not much more because I... I think the same thing I said last month. I've downloaded everything, but I have not had a chance to go through it. So. Okay. All right, finally is uh, Hirsch. Um, on the bike friendly, um, haven't been able to uh, have any th big meetings with the local chamber on, on the subject at all. However, we uh, travel Salem, big time support for bike friendly and one of the things that they're working on, uh, Sam Adelman there, is uh, this is a little different subject, but it brings in big money. 
is National Criterium Racing in downtown Salem. Right. We used to have it years ago around the Capitol. I remember that. And the, the uh, national, and these people move on to the Olympics. These are like time trials or a, ra yeah. a race. It's a race, clearly uh, uh, races. Uh, yeah, and going around and around, around. and around. And, uh, and possibly road races, which might include Kaiser, because road races is uh, a destination, you know. Yeah. But um, this is a kind of a bike-friendly thing that would be coming in because cycling is such a wide-ranging sport. And a, a, a criterium race downtown Salem, especially around the Capitol building, which has been done in the past because um, the universities used to do that. Um, boy, restaurants and everything downtown core area. Do you happen to know how long ago it's been since? Something oh, been? I was looking in my, because they asked me and I looked. It was, it was called the Governor's Cup races. And it, I think the last one was like in 87, 88. Mm -hmm. I was thinking 80s. Yeah, because I did it in the 70s and I placed 24 out of 44. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the things that, that's bike friendly. And that would be, bring in some more bike friendly businesses. With the Monster Cookie, uh, we were able to get three more hotels to join the bike friendly. Nothing out here yet. But. And when you say join, what does that mean exactly? Uh, through Travel Oregon, uh, there is a process and a program called Bike Friendly, and a business can go on there, and there's paperwork and some minimum requirements, and it's free. And what it, the be, their benefits is that, especially traveling cyclists, pull up their web and they can say, oh, this restaurant's here, this dentist's office here, and they can just travel. And it's on the World Wide Web. And it's very, from a business standpoint, it's kind of free advertising. And Travel Oregon, of course, you know, people contact them for, I want to do a bike tour. In, in Willamette Valley, I'm on another committee that's uh, Willamette Valley um, Bicycle Promotion. And the whole valley, it's internationally where this valley is known for cycling. Mm -hmm. And it's so pretty and relatively flat. Mm -hmm. And with our beer and wine industries, wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, did did you feel like you covered everything you wanted for McNary? Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, as their project goes because they have all, they're getting all the equipment in and stuff. And Eric didn't want to start a bike project till that kind of was more than finished. But it's on the docket. It's not been thrown aside. Um, I've already personally guaranteed him a thousand dollars for the project. In, and once we get the uh, the, the actual costs, which isn't going to be that much more because we're going to be using the SeaTac Center because their their racks are just the best ones in the market. Mm -hmm. And at 85 bucks a piece, that's not too bad. Okay. All right. Um, if you want, since we're going to be doing committee member input, you could do the Kennedy thing. Oh, now. Kennedy. Well, uh, we've been, been done several bike skills fairs. Um, in, in May, uh, we did one at Adam Stevens, and that one wasn't as successful. We got a lot of pushback uh, from kids and parents about helmets, um, but we, we were there, and then we did uh, one at Herod Elementary on June 7th, and that was, we had over 120 kids go through the skills fair and whatever. But on uh, May 17th, this is Friday night of Iris Festival, in the the center was open and everything. The teacher, Megan uh, Lamb, wanted to try to, she didn't know Kaiser, so she picked this date and we talked about just having a table and then I'd lead a ride around the neighborhood and that'd be about it. My goodness. The kids weren't at the uh, center, they were there. We had over 200 kids and parents on scooters 
and um, and bikes. And Officer Wampler needs a star, big gold star. He was wonderful. He was there, just just showed up to you know and have his bike there and stuff. But he helped with the uh, we with that many, you know, it, it was herding cats. But the principal was there. Megan was there. The parents were excited. Um, transit was there. They were giving out uh, uh, Misha, Misha and stuff. It was the best event I've been to in a couple of years. And it was all, well, let's just see what happens. And, you know, my gosh, they showed up. And there is now, per Megan and the principal, beginning next year, and this is where you and I may have to help, they have a helmet policy. If they don't have a helmet, we'll help them. If there's emergent need or whatever, they, I explain the, the five dollars, and or and the bike will be pushed aside. It's the first school that's ever done that. They were excited about uh, um, doing even bigger next year, hmm. and. Uh, they were the Boys and Girls Club, of course, was partnering too. It wasn't just Kennedy, so the the bike rack discussion came up, and uh, they may have a, even a place for it. One, so, and again, it, it's a Title One school, and it's been on our dockets for as a, but people inside the. Uh, the uh, office, or actually or the teachers, are excited. There were a lot of teachers there, and they were all excited, and they were committed, which is, you know, I, I go to a lot of these, and you have one or two teachers. Sometimes the principal, the principal was riding with this, with his herd. <laughs> so it was very exciting, and he definitely had a, a commitment that this will be a helmet zone, period, at Kennedy Elementary. And that feedback got to the district level, Linda Meyer, who's kind of second in command, and she's the one that said, I want Kennedy on the safe routes, because there's committed staff there. It, it was amazing, um, because <clears throat> Friday night, a virus festival, there's not gonna be any kids, they're gonna be down, no. How'd you get the word out, was it just the teachers just the teachers they send stuff home yeah well try to they when you said towards the house they send it towards the house yeah. oh, okay. and then they had some announcements and the PTA talked about it at their two meetings um, so it did but it was just bring your scooters and and you have to wear a helmet everybody did have a helmet and Misha from transit had helmets there and I had a few uh, also and uh, seemed to cover everything. But it was an amazing event that uh, impressed me. Good. Because <laughs> I just, you know, Herod was really good because the teacher there was very committed, but not all the administration was committed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll tell you, Her uh, uh, Kennedy, it was just, wow. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we help them, you know, we might be able to get decent bike racks there. Because you got a principal and staff there that are... How much did you say that bike rack you like cost? 85 bucks a unit. For how many? Four? Well, just one. Okay, 85 per, per unit. Per yeah. unit, yeah. It's a U, U shape, two yeah. bikes per... Oh, just a... One U. One just one U. Staple. Okay. Uh, it, it's a staple. staple. And it's a... Uh, uh, the ones that are installed at on Union Street by Saturday Market, those are the ones that were installed last August from the SeaTac Center that the City of okay. Salem bought. So, do you have any photos from that evening? Misha did. Okay, maybe she can send yeah, a couple. Because I, I, I figured there would be just you know my, our booth and. Five or ten kids and a couple of parents ride around the neighborhood with no it was 
and having Officer Wampler, and he stayed extra time, and he had fun with the kids, and uh, he should get a, a an extra monster cookie next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, go back to, to Wayne on the uh, committee member input. Yeah, I don't <clears throat> really have any other uh, input, just the bike racks. I am promoting uh, bike a bike ride this weekend. It's called the Salem 321 ride. Three parks, two bridges, one cause to raise money for Kiwanis Dornbecker Children's Cancer Program. It's at uh, Riverfront Park. It starts at 130, eight miles or 15 miles, all on paved park trails. We'll be going into uh, Riverfront Park, Wallace Marine Park, and Mento Island. And uh, all on trails, you get to ride your bike right beside the river. <laughs> Real pretty route. It's flat, except the two bridges. <laughs> You guys can still register. I've got uh, rider forms here if you want to register for the ride. Yeah, I intend to. <laughs> One other thing, uh, we, this committee uh, uh, committed themselves for July 27th for the run, police run, which is uh, uh, for um, Special Olympics, July 27th from 10 to 1 at Kaiser Rapids Park. And I'll I got a big supply of uh, ODOT safety information and everything that just came in last month and bring some helmets and Is this just like a table or something? Mm -hmm. It'll just be a table. Education helmets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have a time on that? From ten to one. Okay. Okay. Because that's the run. So we we'll have to kind of judge on how it goes, but they're we might be there a couple hours. It might be all the way till one. I don't know, but that's for Kaiser Police. Okay, Gabby. Um, I don't have anything. Okay, David. Not really. No. Um, just something that came to mind while uh, Hirsch was talking about bike-friendly businesses and uh, article I read this week, and I need to go find it and email it to y'all. It was a. Uh, I think it was a Forbes article talking about five reasons to get um, more bicycle uh, traffic in cities, and they were all economic reasons and all, you know, very much saying the only thing it does is improve economics within the city. So I'll try to remember to find that and send it around. Yeah, I haven't seen that, I don't think, but I, I heard that the statistics show that better biking means better right. economy. Um, I have one thing, and I wrote it up, so I'll say it clearly. Um, so uh, on Saturday, January, uh, not January, June 1st, uh, an incident occurred to me that was could have destroyed my family. Um, that evening around 6.30, my family and I were returning uh, home on our bikes from the courthouse fitness pool. Now to get home, we cross River Road at McNary Estates Drive, and I have two children, both nine and seven, and they were with us also on their bikes, so we decided to use the crosswalk uh, on the north side of the intersection. Uh, currently, there's no crosswalk on the south side. Um, you may not, you may know that or not. Yeah. So when the light, uh, so we waited, and when the light and the crosswalk signal changed, we began to cross River Road. Our children were in the lead. Uh, a car coming from the north in the right lane and driving too fast uh, be to begin with almost hit and probably would have killed at least one of my kids. And it was only because of the well-performing brakes that nothing happened. It was within feet. So I don't know what, why this woman, woman didn't see the red light. Uh, frankly, it's irrelevant. But what does strike me in, in hearing folks that came tonight um, and other instances is that for too long, Kaiser, along with other cities, has prioritized moving cars and considered every other form of transportation to be secondary. And if you don't believe me, then I'd like you to answer these two questions. Over the past 15 years, how much money has been spent in Kaiser on transportation for cars, and how much has been spent on everything else? And for that money that has been spent for everyone else, how much of it has been spent that was not part of a project related to street improvements for cars or as a federal or state requirement? As an example of Kaiser's concern for the everyone else, not long ago, 
we were told that the city intends to build a right turn lane from Lock Haven onto 14th by Whitaker Middle, Middle School. I think this is a colossally bad idea because it's between, near two schools and it would only get approved when the city wants to move cars. Frankly, I, I don't care how important it is for someone to arrive at their destination just a few minutes earlier. And I won't sit idly anymore uh, while we continue to prioritize cars. I do apologize to all the families who've had family members killed or injured and to families who've been nearly injured because of these past decisions. And I feel guilty that it took near, the near loss of my children to shake me out of that lazy congeniality that we have here in Kaiser. The very next night after this, three teenagers were killed on Salem Parkway. The driver was drunk, but Salem Parkway exists and is designed that way because of the past decisions from counselors, public works departments, state officials, and traffic engineers that all prioritize moving cars as fast as possible. And even just two days ago, someone in Salem, a pedestrian, was killed. State employee. So, Councilor Kohler, I, I'd like you to pass along to the mayor and the other council that I find it uh, any response that's other than a true, honest, and financial commitment to changing um, pri our prioritization in Kaiser of transportation, that would be a, that anything else would be a half measure. And so over the next few meetings, I will plan on introducing motions to this committee that will direct the city to officially change street design standards on all classes and speeds with, it, with the goal of mo slowing down cars and making streets safe for everyone. And of course, when you make streets safe for pedestrians and bicyclists, we make them safe for drivers too. And I would also like to introduce a motion that would change how city uh, staff uh, designs projects and such that they would re present draft plans to our committee so that we could make comments and input. And then we could vote on final plans and that statement of support or opposition would be on the record to the city council. And you may think I'm being overdramatic and demanding, but until you see how close your child can come to being killed, you would not understand the fear that someone can feel when they see a car come within feet of killing your child. So that's all I had to say. Here, here. Here. Thank you. Um, so fortunately, I guess we had no uh, staff or police here tonight to, so I was able to suck up their time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll move you along to, to Councilor Kohler. Thank you, Chairman de Blasi. Uh, thank you for your input, everyone. I, um, <clears throat> we don't, as a council, we don't look at, at traffic bike safety as something that oh this is out there and we have to put up with you or anything else we we do listen and we look at different things and uh, we'll we'll continue to do so and i will i'll push forward uh, what i can and we'll, we'll see what we can do thank you kathy um i do have something i forgot about and it's in line with what you've been talking about and odot is now doing a study i guess there are state regulations state laws that regulate how what kind of uh speed limits you can have in, in the cities. Mm -hmm. And ODOT's looking, re-looking at that to give cities more leeway to lower speed limits and to have more control over speed limits. So I'll keep an eye on that. I think that study is supposed to be out, I don't know, any time mm. now. And so, yeah. um, you know, if I get some information about that, I'll bring that back here. It might even be helpful to have the guy who's doing it come and give us a little mm. rundown on it or something. That'd be great. Do you know the the fellow or lady doing it? I, I know who's doing it, yeah. Okay, yeah. He's spoken at a couple of other meetings I was at. Oh. Yes. Yeah. That just, something. for no reason at all, reminded me of something else. Yeah. <clears throat> Kathy, were you on the, the, were you at the planning, the long, what is that called, that committee I was? The Build a Land Survey, or Build a Land Inventory. Inventory, housing, housing needs need. analysis, project, advisory committee. Okay. There, yeah. that. Yeah. Were you there at that meeting? I was at the meeting, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, one of the things I was thinking about that I didn't bring up at that meeting was that you can't 
<laughs> you can't get from one neighborhood to another. If you looked at this map tonight that they brought forward, try and get from, that's what I meant, from uh, Sunset to Cummings, and I gotta walk six blocks out of the way. And, you know, I don't even think it was by design, I think it was by accident. Almost all of the old, older part of Kaiser, the problems were caused by lack of planning. Then they did the planning and they didn't plan for any interconnectivity of streets from everything where I live at the north end of town. You can't, if you go down some of the streets off Park Meadow and you want to go down to one of the parks or something, you've got to go five blocks out of your way. Because you can't walk from my house to your house that's one block away, 200 feet away. Mm -hmm. You have to go six blocks down here. Mm -hmm. So I thought, and I'm not sure, but maybe you know more about it than I do because does anybody make policy statements that kind of tells the planning department if you're going to put in a new bunch of houses that you got to have ac reasonable access it should be in the conference who's on the plan anyway on the michael still is yeah so you're on the planning we i just wondered is there something we can say to your committee that would encourage that i don't know what it would be but i don't know how many years ago it was that we it's in there. That, yeah, yeah, it we, is we in there. It's change. just, yeah. as David said, you know, Kaiser has been built over time. Right after the war, a lot of that stuff in, in Palmasia and everything was built off, uh, uh, and Cummings Elementary was built, you know, 54. And it was all county. This was rural. And then, the section down where you live and everything w was built a little later after the flood. Mm. And so, and then when the Weeks uh, Farm moved out onto um, Windsor Island Road, all that land where um, Burger King and everything was put in houses there. That was in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. So, and it was still county and the county didn't care. Right. There was no comprehensive plan. There was no comprehensive no. plan. It was built. And yeah. that's Kaiser's um, bugaboo. <laughs> and then we have the Great Barrier Reef called River Road. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But we do, we do have for new construction, it, especially on cul-de-sacs, that you, I believe it's a shell, you shall, if there's not, not a house on the other side, have an opening <laughs> to the net dude. No, I, I was talking to my neighbor who lives behind me in a half a block away. It, it's nine blocks to her house if I walk over there. Yeah. Great exercise. Yeah, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, did the, put a, the back yeah. they did put a little um, walkway through for, to Kaiser Rapids Park to the south yeah. south side of the park yeah. through the neighborhood. And well, I really I like that because I do that all the time. Where's the one that's tucked down there behind Gubster Elementary? Or that creek, that park on country, country, oh, yeah. country, country north. Country yeah. Yeah. There's a little, a little yeah. trail and a bridge yeah. over it's there. It's actually pretty swamp. nice. Yeah, that's well, nice. that's nice, but it's the only place I've seen it. Right, but compared to some of the other ones, well, actually, there's, there, there, there's a gate behind Safeway and behind Rite Aid you can, you can go through. Yeah, but you can't, are, you can't bike through. You can walk through. Yeah, but you have to get off your bike. Yeah, yeah. Unless you good mountain bike with shocks, you right? <laughs> but I think going up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, behind. Anyway, uh, sorry. Okay, well, um, I think that is it. I got one more. Oh yes, uh, behind Willamette Manor Park, there is a little pathway to connect the neighborhood. Oh, you can go through Willamette Manor Park to get to the road on the other side. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I found one uh, other one someplace I don't remember where, but just out wandering around. <laughs> well, and I don't know. I think the, no, the city they, controls city these, but I don't know if yeah, they have it on their maintenance plan because yeah. I know the one behind the Wehrmart, it's not falling apart, but, you know, trees, litter. <laughs> yeah. So, priority, huh? That's yeah. the owner of the property. Is it? That's their job to keep it up. Oh, I thought the city had okay. One more reminder. Father's right. Day. There's a, yeah. ride, there's a ride going on mm -hmm. on Father's Day. Okay. One thir 130 at Riverfront Park, eight miles or 15 miles, all flat. <laughs> I shall be there. Okay, well, thank you. Good night, everyone. Yeah. See you next time. Thank you. Good job.